Back pain the best treatment options. Back pain can be debilitating and life-altering. It can affect your ability to move, sleep and even think. There are many causes of back pain, but remember that pain levels are not always positively correlated with the degree of seriousness. In other words, minor issues, such as an irritated nerve, can sometimes generate severe short-term pain, whereas life threatening issues, such as a tumor, sometimes lead to minimal pain. Try some common sense home remedies and be aware of the signs and symptoms that warrant a trip to the doctor's office. Dealing with bad back pain yourself. Wait and see. Your spine is a complex collection of joints, nerves, muscles, blood vessels and connective tissue. There are many structures that can generate pain if you move your back the wrong way or experience some trauma. Severe back pain can come on quickly, but it can sometimes go away quickly also, without any treatment whatsoever, because the body has a tremendous ability to heal itself. As such, be patient for a few hours if you experience a bout of bad back pain, avoid any strenuous activities and keep a positive attitude. Signs and symptoms for which you should seek immediate medical attention include, muscle weakness and or loss of sensation in your arms or legs, loss of bladder or bowel control, high fever, sudden weight loss. Total bed rest is not a good idea for most types of back pain because some movement, even just brief, leisurely walks, is needed to stimulate blood flow and healing. If you are in a lot of pain, wait two to three days before resuming normal activities. If your back pain is exercise related, then you may be working out too aggressively or with bad form, consult with a personal trainer. If you think your back pain is work related, then talk to your boss about switching activities or altering your workstation. Such as a more supportive chair or a cushioned mat for underneath your feet. Apply something cold to your back. The application of ice is an effective treatment for essentially all acute, occurring in the last 24 to 48 hours, musculoskeletal injuries, including back pain. Cold therapy should be applied to the most painful part of your back in order to reduce the inflammation and numb the pain. Ice should be applied for 10 to 15 minutes every hour. Then reduce the frequency as the pain and swelling subside. Compressing the ice against your back with a stretchy bandage or elastic support will also help control the inflammation. Always wrap ice or frozen gel packs in a thin towel in order to prevent frostbite on your skin. If you don't have any ice or gel packs, then use a frozen bag of veggies from your freezer. Ice is not be appropriate for chronic back pain. Moist heat may provide more relief. Take a warm bath. Soaking your back in a warm Epsom salt bath can significantly reduce pain and swelling, especially if the pain is caused by muscle spasm or strain. The magnesium in the salt helps the muscles relax. Soaking in a warm bath or applying heat directly to your back likely isn't a good idea if you're experiencing lots of inflammation which is often the result of joint, ligament and nerve injuries of the back. Don't make the water too hot, to prevent scalding, and don't soak in the bath for much more than 30 minutes because the salty water will pull fluid from your body and start to dehydrate you. Alternatively, apply moist heat to your back pain, microwave durable bags work well and are often infused with aromatherapy, such as lavender, that has relaxing properties. Consider taking over-the-counter drugs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, NSAIDs, such as ibuprofen, naproxen or aspirin can be short-term solutions to help you deal with bad pain or inflammation in your back. Keep in mind that these medications can be hard on your stomach, kidneys and liver, so it's best not to use them for more than two weeks at a stretch. Alternatively, you can try over-the-counter analgesics such as acetaminophen, Tylenol, or muscle relaxants, such as cyclobenzaprine, for your back pain, but never take them concurrently with NSAIDs. 
pain relieving creams and gels applied directly to your sore back are another option, especially if the pain is more muscle related. Capsaicin and menthol are natural ingredients in some creams that act to distract your brain from the pain by making your skin tingle. Use a foam roller. Rolling on a piece of firm foam is a good way to massage your spine and potentially relieve mild to moderate discomfort, especially in the mid-back, thoracic, region. Foam rollers are commonly used in physiotherapy, yoga and pilates. Pick up a foam roller at a sporting goods or big box store, they're very inexpensive and nearly indestructible. Place the foam roller on the ground, perpendicular to where you're going to lay your body. Lie down on your back so that the foam roller is beneath your shoulders and begin to roll back and forth. Repeat as many times as necessary, although your muscles might be a little sore after the first time you use a foam roller. Use a tennis or lacrosse ball. Lie down on your back and place a ball between your shoulder blades. Roll around until you find a tender spot. Hold that position for at least 30 seconds, or until you feel the pain going away. Move on to other tender spots. Repeat this every day until the pain improves. This may be used as a preventive measure since these trigger points, most commonly known as muscle knots, have a tendency to appear again due to bad posture or overuse. Perform back exercises. While your back pain may make you reluctant to move or exercise, stretching and strengthening your body can reduce back pain. Before starting exercise, consult with your doctor or a physical therapist about which exercises are appropriate for your specific condition. Exercises such as squats, planks, or simple, gentle stretches can help reduce back pain. Get more ideas by reading the Following articles, treat lower back pain and treat upper back pain. Consider changing your sleeping environment. Mattresses that are too soft or pillows that are too thick may contribute to back pain. Avoid sleeping on your stomach as it can cause your head and neck to twist in ways that aggravate back pain and it can also compress and irritate lower back joints. The best sleeping positions for back pain are on your side similar to the classic fetal position, or on your back with a pillow elevating your legs, which takes some pressure off the low back joints. Although even water beds can be comfortable for some people, most people seem to benefit from a firm orthopedic mattress. Spring mattresses typically last about 8 to 10 years with constant use, depending on the weight of you and your partner. Be sure to use proper lifting techniques. Bad back pain can often be aggravated by improper lifting posture. When you need to lift something, make sure it is not too heavy for you to carry alone, and ask for help if it is. Keep the load close to your body, turning with your entire body instead of twisting or stretching at the waist. There is some disagreement about the very best way to lift a heavy load, but if you want to lift without putting stress on your back, you should squat. Bending at the hips and knees but keeping your back straight, and lift from this position. This will allow you to lift with your legs and not your back. Seeking alternative treatments. Schedule an appointment with a chiropractor or osteopath. Chiropractors and osteopaths are spinal specialists who focus on establishing normal motion and function of the small spinal joints that connect the vertebrae, called spinal facet joints. Manual joint manipulation, also called an adjustment, can be used to unjam or reposition facet joints that are slightly misaligned, which triggers inflammation and sharp pain, particularly with movement. Although a single spinal adjustment can sometimes completely relieve your back pain, more than likely it will take 3-5 treatments to notice significant results. Your health insurance may not cover chiropractic care. Chiropractors and osteopaths also use a variety of therapies tailored more towards muscle strains, which may be more appropriate for your back issue. Traction techniques or stretching of your spine with an inversion table may also help your back pain. Some chiropractors have inversion tables in their offices, 
which allows you to turn yourself upside down in a controlled and easy way, enlisting the help of gravity to decompress your spine. Consider buying an inversion table for home use. At a professional massage, a strained muscle occurs when individual muscle fibers tear, which leads to pain, inflammation and some degree of guarding, muscle spasm in attempts to prevent further damage. A deep tissue massage is helpful for mild to moderate strains because it reduces muscle spasm, combats inflammation and promotes relaxation. Start with a 30-minute massage, focusing on your entire spine and hips. Allow the therapist to go as deep as you can tolerate without wincing. Always drink lots of water immediately following a massage in order to flush out inflammatory byproducts and lactic acid from your body. Failure to do so might cause a headache or mild nausea. Try an acupuncture treatment. Acupuncture involves sticking very thin needles into specific energy points within the skin muscle in efforts to reduce pain and inflammation. Acupuncture for back pain can be effective, especially if it's done when the symptoms first occur. Based on the principles of traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture works by releasing a variety of substances including endorphins and serotonin, which act to reduce pain. There is mixed scientific evidence that acupuncture is helpful in relieving chronic back pain, but there's lots of anecdotal reports that many people find it extremely helpful. Acupuncture points that may provide relief to your back pain are not all located near where you feel the pain, some can be in distant areas of the body.